Yeah, I want you to try. I want you to stop acting like a prima donna. Stop acting like a prima donna. It's not performing. Let me have my ring back. Oh. Inside of Big Ed's residence in San Diego, we see many trinkets with his face on it. He has a plethora of merch on the shelf because the only thing he's actually sold in his life are his soul and self-respect. <laughs> Big Ed's more of a giver and we can see that by how he's given the audience of this show their 13th reason. You are dumb. I don't know if y'all are into mythology, but he would give Narcissus a run for his money because this man actually has his own face tattooed on his leg. This little goblin informs us that he broke up with Liz for the ninth or 10th time, who's counting, right? And it turns out that he's been living alone for the past three months. He gave her life than a week to find a new place when he kicked her out. Wow. Ed's reason for kicking his fiance out of the house is that he wanted to live alone. And as we know, this is a very selfish man that dances to his own tune. About a year ago, his fiance Liz jumped at the opportunity to be engaged to him. In fact, they were only together for a week before they jumped into this engagement, which is moving very fast. Cutscene over to Liz, she informs the audience that Ed broke up with her again and only gave her a week's notice before kicking her out of the house. Like Garsh, Edward, at least allow your fiance more than seven days to find a new place. It just feels like she got evicted. Dude literally treats this girl like she's an inconvenience and she allows this behavior. Liz was couch surfing for a minute until she found the ideal apartment for her and started living on her own. Liz admits the audience that she's not sure what her relationship status with Edward is. He wants her to wear her engagement ring and they're going on dates, but it certainly doesn't feel like they're engaged. He said that that ring cost $13,000, so I'm sure she could get a good amount of money for that. What's that saying? Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Remember, on The Single Life, these two were only together for a month before Ed asked Liz to move in and she said yes. So that's a red flag for both of them. Ed obviously has immense trust issues and jealousy issues, which is why he wanted her to move in so that he could watch her all the time and verify that she wasn't cheating on him. And for Liz, I get that San Diego's expensive, but you need to hold out for longer than a month. Blink twice if you're okay, sis. At first, Ed was infatuated with Liz because he couldn't believe a real life girl wanted to sleep with him, but after a while, he got bored of her vagina. Also, side note, did y'all notice that every time that Ed and Liz create distance, she starts to look healthier. I'm not even kidding. It's like her skin all of a sudden clears up. And I'm not surprised because stress really ages you. And we've seen how this man treats this girl on camera. Can you imagine how he treats her off camera? I watched Kingdom of Heaven the other night for the 20th time. And I find it crazy that King Baldwin and Salah Hadeen treat each other with more respect than Ed treats his fiance in this relationship. As I said earlier, Liz moved out on her own. However, Ed and her have negotiated a deal. And that is that every other night they have to sleep together, spend the night together. Can you imagine how good her skin would look if she moved that to once a week or seeing him once a month, she might even look Asian. <laughs> Fast forward to the tell-all, Angela arrives, causes a shit storm, but before she blows up on everyone, she establishes that her and Ed are friends. You ever hear that saying, real recognizes real? Well, in this case, inbred abomination recognizes inbred abomination. They should do a 90 Day Fiance swap situation and put Angela in a relationship with Ed because I think the two villains would get along. That would be like if Hades was sucking off Jafar. And how about right after Liz and Ed broke up, she caught him on an Asian dating site. Could y'all imagine if this little freak went to Japan? His pants would probably be stained white from coming so frequently and violently. Humpty Dumpty quite literally had a big fall. He was confronted by his fiance about his infidelity and this is what he had to say to defend himself. You just said that you were in communication with her. Liz, sit down. Jesus Did Christ. Did he not? Sit down? What is she, your slave, bro? Even Jabba the Hutt spoke to Leia with more respect. Speaking of Jabba, y'all related because I'm starting to notice some similar features. <laughs> Maybe cosmic cousins. It's a big universe after all. At first, when Liz asked Ed if he messaged his ex behind her back, he lied about it. I'm not surprised he lied. Narcissists will often lie because the truth is offensive to them and they're terrified of facing themselves. Ed, Tell you, you can Terrible rattle off every single thing that Liz has done. But when I ask you a simple question like, did you reach out to Rose? You told I... me no three times that you didn't remember. I might have been mistaken. They're extremely vindictive, calculating, and their memories of offenses is uncanny. Ed the Narcissist wasn't expecting his victim, Liz, to retaliate against him in this moment. However, she is, and instead of sitting with himself and acknowledging his own mistakes, he instead would rather paint her out to be mentally ill. It was just frustrating for Liz to sit there and play the victim, which she's not. Never seen a better example of a narcissist on a reality TV show. The way he reacts is actually textbook. Little Edward Brown in this moment is bugging out worse than Light Yagami when L told him that what he was doing was evil. Obviously in terms of intelligence, Light Yagami is up here and Ed is down here. However, they are both very manipulative dudes. Thank God that Rose came with the screenshots because otherwise I don't think this little creep would have gotten caught. It goes back a lot to what I said in my past video and that's that their relationship is built on convenience, not love, because if she wasn't going on 
on the show with him, he would not be in this relationship with her. Ed's love for Liz is very conditional, and the condition is I get to drag you on this reality TV show and treat you like absolute dog water. And I actually struggle to call it love because realistically, love requires discipline. And in a relationship setting, if you genuinely love someone, it's like the whole world is in black and white and she's in color. Flat out, Big Ed has never been in love in his life. He only tells girls that he loves them so that they drop their guards and he can get those three inches in. Thank you, next. <laughs> to be honest, the majority of Nine Day Fiance fans are very easygoing people. I mean, even though this is kind of a cult following that watches the show and watches our videos, it's like realistically, if you're not a shitty person, like we're gonna like you and root for you. The problem with Ed is that we saw how he treated Rosemary Vega and the majority of us were checked out after that. Because at first I feel like a lot of us felt bad for him because of his medical condition and because he seemed like kind of a loser during his introduction. But then when we saw how he treated Rose, treated his family, treated other people, it was very apparent that this dude sucked. And it's actually a shame because I don't know if y'all are into quantum physics, I really am getting into it. And I feel like there's an alternate reality where this guy didn't use his medical condition as a way to get sympathy from people and instead used it to inspire. However, the version of himself that we got in this current timeline is just not it. Did you say yes or no? Did you or did you not just say I have not spoken to her? Me no speak English. No, nah, he did not just hit this girl with the me no speak English. Chupapi muñano. Dude just got exposed for cheating on his fiance and is taking zero accountability and instead finds it appropriate to make jokes about the situation. We are all attracted to what we think we deserve and clearly Liz thinks that she deserves toxicity. What the You know what, it's not something to joke about, Ed. It is, cause she's, this is her. This is who Liz is. She's yeah. reading, the proof is in the pudding. She's reading the stupid text. Just tell me about that text. She just said, Tell me what about that text. I've not spoken to her. See? Right away, Kimball Lay is speaking up and being very vocal defending Liz, which is nice to see because in the past, she hasn't normally taken a woman's side. Not to mention my respect for her has really gone up because she didn't get back together with Sussman. For Edward, it's very typical for a narcissist to flip the script and immediately try to paint the victim in a negative light after being exposed. Ed is a tricksy little hobbitsist because he actually is a vulnerable narcissist who disguises himself as a grandiose one. For those of you that are unaware, grandiose narcissists have a very high opinion of themselves and truly believe themselves to be superior to everyone else in the room. While on the other hand, vulnerable narcissists have low levels of self-esteem, high levels of insecurity, and tend to compensate by focusing only on themselves. Liz has openly admitted multiple times on the show that the Ed on camera and off camera are completely different dudes. Big Ed is the online persona of Ed's most confident self when realistically off camera, he's more like this. Hey friends, this is Big Ed. I was just helping a friend buy a Vespa and this is a lesson in don't allow your consideration to become your clients. And here was the example. On the way over to the client's house, my friend was worried that um, the guy wasn't going to let the Vespa go for $400 less than what he wanted to sell the Vespa for. I'm like, look, be positive. Don't let that be your consideration because it became his. Again, short story long, we got the Vespa for $400 less and my friend's super happy. Now, obviously this side of him isn't seen by the majority of people because if anyone recognizes him in public or comes up to him and knows him from the show, he breaks into character like that. So Liz ordered the two for one special, didn't even realize, and I'm sure that because she's a Gemini, she felt some sense of relatability to these two different sides of him. Liz also comes from a very unstable upbringing and her relationship with her mother isn't great because as a kid, her mother focused more on raising her brother with special needs than her. And when Liz speaks on her mother, you can tell that she's withholding a lot of information information that maybe she doesn't feel comfortable sharing with the public or the fans of the show. So I'm really curious what that relationship with her mother looked like because a lot of times we will date people that resemble our parents because comfort and familiarity feel safe. But of course the issue with that is obviously if you had a terrible relationship with your mother and you're chasing a partner that reminds you of your mother, not the smartest thing to do. So Ed said that he didn't, hasn't spoken to you at all and then now he's saying he can't remember if he spoke to you. I didn't. That's not true because he already messaged me and I have um, screenshot. Liz has also been very vocal about the fact that she's always been in toxic relationships. And for her, it's like the only person that can save you and break that cycle is you. So I would love to see her take that power and that energy that she places in relationships and put that on herself and just watch herself grow. I've seen a lot of women put themselves in the tower and wait for a man to come save them when realistically you should have been your hero of your story your entire life. You just lied. Hey, to Liz. everybody right here. 
Liz, what are you thinking right now? Ooh, that smug look he gives her is so tilting. Doesn't it just want to make you grab him and compress him more into a bowling ball and throw him and score a strike? Nice throw! It's such a fucking cliche. He's the kind of dude that would get caught cheating on his wife 20 years later and then leave her for the secretary. The only thing that this girl has to gain in this relationship is being on reality television. And I'm sure she's capitalizing on that. The majority of the cast members will rip cameos and make money that way from fans of the show. However, I just wish that she understood that there's multiple paths to get to where you want to go. I'm tired of all the lies and deflection and projection. Um, and sometimes the money just isn't worth the disrespect. It's almost like she believes that she can change him. However, he's already dumped you 11 times. He takes every opportunity to show you who he really is. So at some point, Liz needs to walk away from this relationship for the sake of her and her child. I know, uh, alam ko naman na uh, kung nagsasabi ka ng totoo. Gaya ng gira mo sa akin, nagsinungan ni Kat, bakit nagsisinungan ka din sa kanya kung totoo ang mahal mo talaga siya? Well, first of all, I'm not lying to Liz. Little Edward Brown, you just got caught lying to Liz, your fiance in front of the entire world. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you're not gonna be able to manipulate or gaslight your way out of this one, buddy. <laughs> Since Rose left head and shoulders, she experienced quite the glow up, and I think that it's very mature of her to come on the tell-all in order to support Liz. Let me know what y'all think in the comments about this, but it's really cool to see women supporting women. Usually y'all just tear each other down. <laughs> um, I'm not denying the fact that, um, I was on a dating website a year and a half ago. I admitted that. I didn't remember if I had texted Rose or not, and Liz and I were broken up. This coward will do anything to not face himself. Let's break down what he's really saying here. Edward, uh, she's upset with you that you purposely started an argument with her in order to break up with her and then use that as justification to go on an Asian woman dating site to flirt with women. Edward's trying his best to be technical right now instead of accountable, and we can see that by how this man just doesn't acknowledge what he did is a bad thing. If you were a high value man, you would have recognized after your first breakup with Liz that you were toxic for her life, and instead of getting back together with her to go on the show, you would have let her go so that she could find happiness. I have no doubt in my mind that Liz's soulmate is somewhere out there, but it's hard to find your soulmate when you're getting strung along by an egg. And as for his point of, I don't remember hitting it, my ex and IG seems like something you would remember. Highly doubtful, uh, nice try, stay hard stuck. It's a lie, not even know it's a lie. You guys, you're with somebody for two years, you you broke up 10 times. I don't even know, honestly, if we were together or not. Eddie's such a cap ass loser. How do you not know that you're in a relationship with someone, bro? Every time we see it on our screens, he mentions how many times him and Liz broke up and usually the count just goes up by one every time we see him. So he's keeping track doing those mental tallies. However, he expects us to believe that he wasn't aware that they were in a relationship. Not to mention, he just got caught lying in front of everyone about messaging his ex behind his girl's back. So everything coming out of his mouth is diarrhea. Rose, do you think that Ed is still interested in having a relationship with you? 1,000% man wants to clap cheeks in the Philippines, otherwise he wouldn't have DM'd her on Instagram. Unfortunately for him, Rose points out that he's in a committed relationship. She's saying he's interested, but he's um, in, in a relationship right now. Y'all, the silence is deafening so awkward, like all of the air got sucked out of the room. Right now in this moment, Liz looks so uncomfortable because she's coming to terms with the fact that she's never gonna be enough for this man. Liz is just proof that you don't have to watch Naruto to understand pain. I had to get an anime reference in. I don't think I have any more respect. Let me have my ring back. Oh. Wow, what a dick. Are you kidding me? Couldn't give a more insult response if he tried. Give me the ring back with his smug look. Don't you just want to like rip his face off and wear it to your birthday party? Okay, wait, I don't know if I can say that. Wow. 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 No, no, big head. Oh, wow. wow. You would think that this man would have more respect for the woman that sat with him in uncomfortable moments and did the most to make him feel loved the past couple years. Let's be honest with ourselves. We watched the show. We saw this coming, but it's the manner in which he went about it. He couldn't have done this in a more distasteful and disrespectful way. You're a dick, yo. I'm just going to say it. He got caught. I just want to move on. 
I got two words for Liz, yas and slay. In some ways, when you chase things so persistently, it pushes that very thing away. Liz, you need time for healing. You keep attracting these toxic partners because you haven't healed the wounds of the relationship that you've had with your mother and it's still carrying on to this day and that's why you're trying to attract these partners that remind you of your mother and that relationship and you keep trying to seek this validation from them or that acknowledgement. Like you want them to realistically look at you and tell you that you're worthy of love when you should be giving that to yourself but you can't because you don't know how to do so. You need to learn how to do so. You need to have those uncomfortable conversations with yourself in the mirror and really start to think about who you want to be. What version of yourself is the healthiest? What can you work on as a human being? Once you grow and learn how to love yourself, then you're gonna attract a partner that's actually gonna treat you right. Liz, Ed, I, I'm not exactly sure what to say and I don't know what the future of your relationship is, but I hope there's some healing down the line. Thanks so much. This relationship was so convenient for Ed because he was aware that Liz had low self-esteem and he just exploited her so that she would go on the show with him. And I'll tell you what, if these two get back together after the tell-all, I might need to go to therapy. Ed proceeds to wear a smug look on his face and throw himself a little pity party. The host then thanks Rosemary Vega for her time of graciously coming back into Ed's life to expose him for the creep that he is. And honestly, I agree with her. Firm handshakes to Rose for this. Liz is spun out of her skull right now because this is the 12th time that this dude has broken up with her. So she gets up and walks away and then Ed appears to wink to someone and I don't know who he winks to. The audacity of this dude to not only cheat on this girl but ask for the ring back when she calls him out for his shit was crazy to watch as a viewer. I legit gasped and honestly I hope that he doesn't give that ring to another girl. You think the one ring is bad with Sauron's voice in your head. Imagine this little freak saying you're fat. <laughs> Ironically enough it seems that Liz can't escape the emotional damage because as they're walking to the back room Kim accidentally calls her Rose. <laughs> I know it wasn't intentional for Stan to do this. I think that she just legit got confused and had a moment, but it just seems like Liz can't escape being compared to Ed's ex. It's been the best our relationship's ever been. This is not how I expected. Um... Liz, look at me. It's highly probable that everybody watching the show is blowing up your IG DMs. You need to stay single for a while. You keep trying to make Ed understand your worth and how vile you are in his life, but he continues to disrespect you and chase other options. So you need to take a step back and you need to prioritize yourself. Now, what those other options are remains to be seen because a lot of us are struggling to believe that he has other options. Man thinks he's Jack Harlow, but I think the only options he has are hookers and girls trying to use him to get on reality TV. I was pissed and I just sat there and went, oh my God. So yeah, I'm like, I'll take the ring. Uh, I, it probably wasn't appropriate, but. No, not at all. It's obvious to everybody that has watched this couple interact that Liz and Ed trauma bonded. However, she places more of an importance on this bond than he does. Liz is irresponsible and foolish, especially because she is a mother. So at some point you need to reach a level of maturity where you recognize that the present you is very self-sabotaging, especially in a relationship setting, and you need to spend time alone in order to level up and be comfortable being with yourself because a relationship shouldn't be about codependency. Also, there's that old saying, actions speak louder than words do. Instead of trusting Eggman's false promises, you should have been paying attention to his actions, especially during arguments. And it makes no sense from an outsider looking in because not only is he an old man that can't process his emotions in a healthy way, he's arguably one of the ugliest people we've ever seen in our lives. And if any Anyone says looks don't matter, you're full of shit. Okay, so this girl's way out of this dude's league. There's different levels to this shit too. I've heard that saying, you give an ugly guy a chance. This is like, you give a goblin a chance. This man looks like something out of a dungeon. Today it just showed me, look, you don't support me. I owe her an apology though for asking for the ring back. Well, I hope she's okay. She's gonna be fine and- Yeah, I hope so. You know. <laughs> Oh, she's gonna be fine. So obvious that this man doesn't care about this girl. What kind of reaction is that, bro? And as for his point of Liz not supporting him, <laughs> buddy, she sat with you in uncomfortable moments and tried to force you to face yourself so that you could grow as a human being, not to mention put you first in this relationship. So to say that is not only a lie, very out of touch with the reality of the situation. What she did for you came at the cost of her own mental health, reputation, and sense of worth. Little Edward Brown, the level of devotion that this woman has given to you in this relationship is immense, but more importantly, undeserved. There's nothing really there pulling me back except like loving him. So, like I don't need him. I don't need him. I've never needed him. I've just always wanted him, so. 
That yeah. sucks. Lizzie, don't seek external validation because it never ends well. My advice for Liz and everybody that struggles with a lot of these same issues is to take five minutes out of your day and legit go talk to yourself in the mirror and just name five mental goals that you have for this year. As we start the new year, I know that most of y'all have already set those physical goals, but the mental goals are just as important. When I talk to myself in the mirror, sometimes my brother will walk by and think that I'm crazy because I'm saying things like your frequency is a light to be shared with the world, explore it deeper and learn how to harness your inner strength. And I'll say things things like this and Christian will walk by and be like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Here's my thing with it. As embarrassing as it will seem or uncomfortable as it will seem, it's important to place your intentions out in the universe. Maybe it doesn't work for everybody, but for me personally, I like to speak things into existence. And if I'm chasing a more authentic version of myself or a version of myself where I will feel more powerful, I need to create a habit. And the habit is listing the five things that I want to embody and then embodying them throughout the day. For Liz, you have to realize that you're both the hero and the villain of your own story. We can rag on little Edward as much as we want, but at the end of the day, you are giving him this power over you. You are allowing him to treat you like this and you are constantly chasing this relationship with him and this validation with him. And you're almost like a yo-yo because he can throw you and pull you back just like that. That is not your true enemy, Liz. Your true enemy is your present you. The you in the present that gives this fat rat power over you, yeah, you gotta kill that bitch off and it's gonna be really uncomfortable. Most uncomfortable thing you can do is face yourself and I'm only assigning homework because I genuinely wanna see you break the habit. I'm actually not the enemy too. A lot of cast members will like block me or think that like I'm the problem. I'm not the problem actually. The problem is you because you're getting in your own way, which is why you fuck up every relationship you enter. Here's the homework assignment and we can all do it together. It doesn't just have to be Liz. Like I'm legit doing this and it's actually working out really good. I'm seeing a lot of positive results. So write down five things that you wanna change about yourself this year and talk to your reflection. Liz gotta ask herself, who is that girl I see staring straight? back at me. I don't know about y'all, but Mulan is my favorite Disney princess. No, Edward, not because she's Asian, because she's a warrior. And any girl can wear a dress. Very few will ride into battle with you. First conversation I want Liz to have with herself is I want you to acknowledge that your devotion, your loyalty, your nurturing energy are beautiful qualities to have as a human being. Then I want you to acknowledge that not everyone deserves to see that side of you and make a promise to yourself that until that energy is reciprocated, you are not gonna do the fucking most for another man, especially a fat rat that treats you like shit and has already broken up with you 12 times. Don't settle, I'm talking to you. You deserve to be in your feminine energy as a queen. And for the kings, you deserve to be in your masculine energy with someone that makes you better. I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. Comment below, subscribe, follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.